Hey everyone, Sam Davidson here with MEA Worldwide and I am at the world premiere of HBO's new limited series, Mrs. Fletcher. We're gonna be talking to all of the stars and more. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so stay tuned. How does this character, Eve, really hit home for you in that you kind of said, I need to play this role? <sighs> I mean, I think there was a sense of, I don't know, there was, when I first read it and then the book, there was just such a profound sense of loneliness. Um, of and then of bravery of just like going to of this woman that was like at that stage in the game was like I'm going to just I'm gonna start this is this is the time for me now to just start exploring who I am for real on a, on a deep deep cell level and um, I I just there's, I, it was very moving to me and um, a part I hadn't seen before and it was kind of flipped a lot of tropes on its head the cougar the um, uh, you know, the MILF, like all these ideas of what it is to be sexual over 40, like all this nonsense. Um, I was just excited, just felt very like grounded and real and um, uh, I it just couldn't wait to get into it. Do you think in some way, speaking of tropes, that your character and your son Brendan's character are in a way going through a parallel experience of discovering themselves? Yes, yeah. It's almost like an inverted experience. Mm -hmm. Like they it's like they this Pandora's box of internet porn does kind of does the opposite things for for each other. Like he he realizes in college that what had worked for him in high school doesn't anymore. And for me it becomes this um, kind of almost like a an allowance to start exploring or an openness to be able to start exploring things that I didn't think I was literally allowed to do. <laughs> so it's like the kind of an inverse, almost an inverse journey. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how your character's journey plays such a pivotal role because of course we have Mrs. Fletcher's journey but we also have yours. We do have my journey. I, I, I got my own little storyline in there. You get to see a love story. Um, I play a professor of uh, creative writing at the community college that the titular Mrs. Fletcher takes my class and there's just a few students so we all end up hanging out and I end up dating one of my students and he's a, this young black geeky sci-fi writer and I shouldn't say young whatever adult um, and uh, it's it's really kind of wonderful because I think he assumes I might have an issue dating a black man and I assume that he'll have an issue dating a trans woman and for both of us we have other issues that are far more important those are secondary <laughs> what was what was that like playing that character for you and did you feel like you kind of had a heavy weight on your shoulders to take that responsibility um, yeah, you know in the process it didn't feel like a heavy weight um, I guess when you kind of like step back and think about it but when the, the the writing didn't suggest it to be heavy at all so I think that's what kind of made it um, you know, go with ease, you know, and not be t so taboo. Mm -hmm. um, because there's, there's more, I feel like there's a, there's a representation, not necessarily in, in, in TV and in, in film that we see, of, of a straight male, that we call cis male, dating a transgender woman at all. And uh, I think that was pretty, pretty bold on HBO's behalf. I think it was definitely something that should be seen on the screen. Uh, and I was happy I was able to contribute to that, that, that image. So. Well, you deal with it all with a, a very clean sense of nonchalance, which I think is extremely important. Um, was that kind of a goal for you to make it like this is just like any other relationship? Yeah, yeah. I think that that's, that was the uh, the streamline for that role. Um, and. When I originally received it, you know, he was a, a mechanic, you know, down to earth, just uh, meat and potatoes guy contemplating on how he wanted to experience life. You know, he was recently divorced, he had children, um, he was going through this, uh, you know, just transformation. Uh, and, and, and part of that, he wanted to check himself on a lot of the themes uh, that was changing in society. Uh, like understanding the gender roles and gender identity, like he was very curious about that, and I felt like I was able to carry that, even though they changed the character to a radiologist who didn't have that backstory. Having that past knowledge about the character and bringing it into the the current situation and uh, the role it really created that ease. It really was like, you know. It was something that he was curious about, one, and it's something that he wanted to know more about and, and, and fall into. So, I mean, that's what Curtis does. So, yeah. Uh, thank you.
Thank you so much. Your character, you know, uh, we start off seeing you in the first episode. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your relationship with Brendan? Yes, so uh, Brendan and I were together uh, previously, when you which you don't see in the show. Um, and then, without giving too much away, um, I, I have a new encounter with him in the first episode of the show. And um, he's someone that I really like, um, but he kind of took advantage of me. And um, it just really catalyzes the whole entire plot line of his, his uh, view and treatment of women. So... And so obviously this entire show is about Brendan's mom, Eve. Um, what do you, do you think anything about the father or the son-mother relationship like plays into the way that he treats women? Like why he treats women that way? I think it really plays into the fact that he grew up with pornography in his life. I mean, obviously Eve is figuring that out right now, but I mean, I think a big issue in society is men's treatment of women come from what they see in porn. Um, so that's where I really think it comes from. I, don't, I wouldn't make it, I wouldn't say that she was a bad mother at all. Oh, right. Um, but yeah, I just think that they just never really had the conversation and he never really asked and she never really answered. So, um, of course then, if you have no other sisters or other women like that in your life, then what are you going to look at for those examples? That's going to be what you what you watch. So, Tell us a little bit about how your character gets intertwined with Eve, of course, Mrs. Fletcher. Right. Well, um, we meet in community college and I, Julian, uh, uh, end up there because in high school I've, I've and it's never it's not really fully discussed it's kind of gone into more detail in the book but um, in in high school I went through basically a depressive episode a really a really bad depressive episode and kind of shattered any chance I had at getting into college because I didn't really you know couldn't do it I just and so finally I got on the right medication and I'm trying to kind of regroup and get my life together and community college is the way to do that and Eve's son, Brendan, was a major factor in my depressive episode yeah. uh, because he's a jerk, to me at least. Um, yeah. So well, we your character has so many problematic um, you know, issues in a way to him. Can you tell me a little bit about, though, why you think your character treats women that, the way that he does? Because he doesn't really mean to do bad things, but it's just kind of innate in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's conditioned to do so by a lot of things, by his, you know, his upbringing, by his father, or, you know, lack of a presence of, and, um, and, you know, something I talked to Tom about is that he also, like, physically, you know, he emulates what he sees in porn, so he takes a lot of from the internet, that's kind of the way it, it works a lot of the time now, you know, a lot of young people. Hey guys, we have had a fantastic night here at the world premiere of HBO's new limited series, Mrs. Fletcher. We hope that you guys have enjoyed these interviews. If you'd like to see more like them, please go to our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or download the app for free. We'll see you next time.